Hi, welcome. My name is Amanda Hartwick. I'm this um, special projects coordinator for the city. Uh, alongside me, I have Katie Barron, our city engineer, and Jacob Spear, our director of public works. Behind the scenes, we also have some representatives from SYB. Um, before we get started, I want to go through a couple of housekeeping items. As you notice that you're all in um, listen only mode, so you're muted right now. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation, and there's two ways to submit a question. You can use the chat function, and those questions will come directly to me. And then the other way is to um, use the raise your hand function, and I can unmute you so you can address Katie and the contractor directly if you like. Um, we've also got Katie's contact information on the screen, so if you need additional information after the presentation, um, you can reach her that way. The other thing I'd like to note is that we are recording the presentation. So if for some reason you have to leave the presentation early, we will make this available on our website. Um, Katie, did I miss anything? No, ma'am, I think we're good. Okay, great. Well, then I will hand off to you and then I'll join you at the end for the questions piece. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, as Amanda said, my name is Katie Barron. I'm the city engineer at the city of University Park. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for those that have this this is actually our second neighborhood meeting i know a lot of you had joined us for our meeting uh, back in february kind of letting you know this was coming well now we're here so it is my pleasure to be able to have a lot more details about this uh, project and um, kind of give you a little bit more information so we've been talking about improvements in snyder plaza uh, from the city staff perspective and with council over the last year and a half or so um, and those involve all of these things right here um, but for the most part today, we are specifically talking about this utility contract. So we have separated out the utility piece because all of the utilities in uh, Snyder Plaza are actually in most of, the vast majority of them and the services are in the alleys, same as they are for most of our uh, residents around town. So with that, we went ahead and kind of separated that piece out so that we could get those utilities replaced in advance of whatever happens uh, within the plaza because it's pretty straightforward, water and wastewater and alley pavement is there's not a whole lot of different things that we can decide. So uh, we advertised that co uh, contract, oh, late February, was, uh, and we ended up a little bit delayed because of the, uh, the storm. So uh, we were able to take um, contracts and uh, get that job bid, and uh, we're ready to go with it. Um, so what this kind of, what this includes, this is strictly utilities and some paving water and wastewater line replacement in the alleys east and west of Snyder Plaza. Uh, there's some work in Daniel and there's some work in Hillcrest. Um, we also have water line replacements on all the cross streets, Rosedale, Milton, Rankin and Westminster that cross the plaza, but those are just ditch line replacements. There will be no paving um, in advance of the surface improvements project and the, the, pave, the repaving of all of that street will happen then. We'll cover it up with temporary pavement, don't worry, but the, the vast majority of that will happen at a later date. Um, this reconstruction work also includes uh, the alley pavement, so there'll be brand new alley pavement back there as well. As I mentioned, we advertised this project uh, and awarded the contract to SYB Construction uh, in March, and Council approved that contract. Uh, they are ready to, ready to mobilize, and that will start on uh, May 17th, which will look a little bit different that we've got to get some um, things kind of behind the scenes pulled together, the lot that they're going to use for, uh, the Rankin-Hersey lot that they're going to use for some construction activities, kind of get that prepped and ready to go. Um, and then you'll start seeing some, us really get started right after that. This construction will continue in phases through fall of 2022. And I'm going to go through the, the purpose of this presentation primarily today is to discuss those, that phasing and the, the schedule with you, kind of show you what all is going to happen. Um, and answer any questions that you have. We have about 5,000 feet of wastewater that we're gonna be replacing in the alleys uh, and on Hillcrest and Daniel. We have about 7,500 feet of water line that we're replacing and that difference in uh, amounts is the water lines crossing the plaza. And with that is the full alley replacement. And to orient you, you're gonna see this map a lot. North is to the right uh at, up where lovers is and you can kind of and hillcrest is at the bottom so we're kind of it's oriented a little bit differently but just so you can kind of figure out where you are in the world and where your uh place of business or building you own or residence is in relation to this map so i realize this is a very small 
thing to see, a large thing on a small piece of paper. But this, I wanted to share with you the schedule so you could kind of see how the phasing actually works. This is the project schedule that uh, SYB submitted as part of their proposal package. Um, and one of the reasons that we were very comfortable selecting them because they were, they've shown that they intend to get all of this work done in the time frame that we asked them to, if not beating it by a little bit, um, and how they're going to phase it. Uh, I also show this a little bit because the phasing is a little bit different from what I originally proposed to you uh, last February. Um, and it, it's not, it's still kind of going in the same route, but how they're choosing to do a couple of things is a little bit different. Specifically, um, this time period here, where this first alley is closed and kind of some of the overlapping pieces. And I'll get in, uh, into that in a little bit. Um, it's, it's all still kind of phase one, but it's really like one A and one B. And you'll see, <clears throat> you'll see what I mean in a minute. This has also been updated to reflect their actual starting date of May 17th. So these are the best, their best guess with what uh, time frame we will be doing this project in. This very colorful slide is mainly to walk you through uh, what all, how we intend to get this project done. And SYB pretty much followed this with a couple of exceptions. This looks different from what I showed you in February, uh, primarily from when they're choosing to do uh, the water, line, uh, water lines on the cross streets. Um, they've pushed that to the last, which is totally fine. It works within our, our um, what we had intended. So the phasing looks a little bit different. The colors look a little bit different, but for the most part, the order of work is about the same. And I'm gonna go through each one of these phases, specifically kind of zoomed in a little bit so you can see what all is gonna happen. It will be very repetitive, but just know that that's, there's a, a method to the madness. So uh, you'll kind of get a feel for how this project is going to work. Phase one is this section of Alley A that's between Westminster and Milton. Uh, we've got Westminster and Rankin and then Rankin to Milton. We're doing these Alley A because there's residential on one side and commercial on the other side, it, we've kind of grouped them together as opposed to Alley B, their, their individual. And primarily that's so we can kind of move a little bit, kind of get them grouped together. That works very well uh, for the contractor. We anticipate this closure to be about three months. There will be temporary water main, temporary water service. You will never be out of service with a couple of small changeover pieces that you'll know about in advance and they will not last very long. We will alert you and notify you when those uh, when that will need to take place, when we put you on the temporary water and then when we take it, take you off. Um, and that's the main reason why we close the alleys so that we can provide that temporary water. It's just laying on top of the concrete, on top of the alley on both sides and the contractor can get in there, get their business done and then get it paved. And then we take the temporary water out and you're good to go. In fact, we take it out before the paving happens. But um, that being said, the alley is closed. You will not have access to anything in the rear of your alley. And because of that, we have locations for sanitation, which I've indicated as uh, with stars on each of these slides. And kind of these, this is what I've worked with the sanitation uh, superintendent to kind of, this is our anticipated location for dumpsters. They may change if it's not working or, um, but this is kind of where we've taken into consideration where we're gonna need to have those. Um, and you can see the, the blue square right there is where the contractor will be able to use that lot that the city owns uh, for their construction purposes, material storage, equipment storage, so it's not on the street and in your way um, for the most part, so we can kind of manage that piece of it, um, at least in the plaza. It will also be, um, it'll have a fence around it uh, that's a plywood fence, so uh, very secure with gates um, and that uh, will allow them to kind of work a little bit faster and be able to be um, more intentional with their work. Um, as I said, this includes the alley pavement, pavement as well. So then they'll do this piece and then move on. But while they're doing this, we also have kind of, this is what I was talking about with phase 1A and then 1B. These are happening kind of at the same time. Um, and we, this, this is the sewer line replacement for uh, on Hillcrest. So downstream for all of these lines is actually on to the north, so at Lovers. So they'll start at the Lovers end and work their way south towards Daniel. We anticipate this work to be about a month long, and there will be basically just closures on Hillcrest for um, an out, the outside northbound lane. So this is on the east, the, the wastewater line is on the east side of Hillcrest, on that northbound side, until it kind of crosses over in that little piece. But um, 
there'll be two lanes of traffic to open at all times and there'll be kind of local closures only we're anticipating about a half a block at a time so you'll see that work kind of progressing south if you will um, and there'll only be local closures they'll plate or and or put temporary paving down um, every night alleys and driveways will still have access and stuff like that and they'll we'll be able to work with um, with anybody having issues on that side immediately after they finish the water line they'll or the wastewater line they're working to the water line which is on the east side um, both of these will be about a month in duration they'll be running concurrently with that first alley uh, alley a piece and this is a new 12 inch water main it's actually in a different location than the existing eight inch water main that's there so there will be no service disruption and they'll be able to move pretty quickly now i realize that this is in front of and right behind existing parking spaces and rest assured they will be they will only be working in little small increments of time so the only closure the only parking spaces that would potentially be blocked are right where they're working and then we'll have them move kind of so it might not it might be not available today but it will be tomorrow if you will so be but it will be just work with us and that the contractor will be able to work with you as well to be able to kind of get that those um piece is kind of going and the local closures um half blocks at a time is kind of what they, they won't be here very long it'll probably it'll go much quicker than than you probably are thinking oh this is going to be terrible it, it actually won't be and they'll move they'll probably they're going to work from uh south to north in the same the same way and again it will not traffic will be on those uh on that west that east side uh two-way traffic again same kind of thing so um, and with that, they'll flip over to the piece on Daniel, that water line, if you look right here, so the water line ends right here, and then we're going to pick it up on Daniel here, and then run it, run it down towards Dickens from Hillcrest. Uh, there's also a sanitary sewer piece that is, um, that's right here. Maybe y'all can see mine. Anyway, it's basically from Dickens to Alley B that they'll be doing roughly at the same time. So this, this piece of this will be about two months um in duration there'll be local closures only but just about a half block at a time and working with um with you on where uh the driveway the garage entrance and exits and those kinds of things they'll they'll be temporary pavement um and there'll be very little disruption to the water service then we get into phase two and i left this phase two piece up first because that's the this is the full width paving on daniel immediately after they finish that when they finish the water and wastewater piece, then they'll flip over to doing uh, the pavement on the paving on Daniel. We're repaving this entire section of street because of where the utilities kind of land. It just makes better sense to go ahead and pave that whole thing, including sidewalks uh, on the north side and um, kind of those, those curb ramps and stuff like that. And this is anticipated to take two to three months by the time we get everything removed and put back and formed up and everything it just takes a little bit of time so there will be detours as necessary uh, with how they do this work but there'll be very limited um, utility service disruption just primarily detours around and this will be running concurrently with the paving and the replacement in that second section of alley a from milton to rosedale rosedale to daniel um, this will be the water and wastewater replacements with the alley repaving this section will take about three months and we have the sanitation location shown there as well uh, temporary water and they'll uh, the uh, closure will be a hard closure you won't have access to that um, but you should have very limited uh, disruption to your water service which i know is primarily the biggest concern for especially for restaurants and things like that but we'll be able to work uh, work with you about and kind of find the best time for all users as to when that switchover will be and again you'll know well in advance of what uh when that's going to happen so you, you can plan accordingly additionally with phase two is finishing up the pavement uh the pavement replacement the ditch line replacement on hillcrest for both of those that water and wastewater line this this will take about two months i think it may take less than that but this is kind of what they have um proposed right now because it's just removing that temporary pavement and then running the ditch line all the way up we're not replacing all of hillcrest right now so that uh, that that will come at a different time. Um, right now, we're just going to do these ditch lines, and they they'll do one side and then the other. So there'll be two lanes of traffic maintained at all times, um, one one in each way most likely. So um, just be 
mindful of that as we kind of move through this phase two. Phase three switches over to Alley B and then we kind of hopscotch all the way south. So again, this is the downstream end. So we start on this end. It'll be the same as all the other alleys. I know I'm starting to sound very repetitive now, but it's water and wastewater replacement. It's alley repaving. We anticipate each one of these little alley segments taking two to three months. Um, because of the commercial side of it, there's, there's many more uh, service connections to make, so it takes a little bit more time. And just getting the, the work coordinated and the alley, all of the driveways placed correctly and get all the paving correct, it just takes a little bit more time. There will be temporary water on all these as well um, and sanitation locations that we'll need to uh, probably adjust as we go through. This is our best guess with what how it is working now and we'll be able to adjust that as we kind of get into construction and sanitation knows what to kind of expect and the contractor knows what to expect with all that as well. Phase four is that next piece of alley from Rankin to Milton. Water and wastewater and alley, temporary water, and limited service disruptions with sanitary sewer on at we try to place them on both sides on both uh, on both sides of the alley on both ends of the alley uh, for convenience um, and again about two to three months of construction for this piece as well Milton to Rosedale is the same two to three months temporary water service limited disruption we'll be able to work with you on how to get your water in but the alley will be closed Again, all of these alleys, when we're working in your alley, the alley will be closed. You will not have access to things. So we will be working with you on things with, that, with deliveries, um, with grease traps, with, with sanitation. Um, my inspect, the chief inspector for this job is going to be Mark Rusha. His contact information will be at the end, and you'll be seeing him put out notices and stuff like that, uh, along with my other two inspectors that will be around but um, and myself, but we'll be... Uh, able to kind of coordinate all of that information on the back end. Um, and then this last section, phase six, Rosedale to Daniel, uh, will be the, the very last thing that happens with our um, alley closures. So uh, sanitation locations and kind of um, what's going to happen with this street kind of configuration and closures and all those kinds of things. So um, this is, I'll leave that for just a minute so everybody can kind of see what's happening with that. Lastly, we have phase seven, which is just the water line replacements across uh, Snyder Plaza itself on Rosedale and Milton, Rankin and Westminster. Um, these are gonna be new eight inch water mains. They're in a new location, so they'll be very, it, it's offset from where the existing line is. It's just ditch line replacement. Um, so there should be very minimal disruption to water service again. There's not very many of uh, the businesses that have connections water service connections off of these lines but there are a few so we'll be working with you as we move forward um if the, if you are on this call as we move forward with this you'll be able to know in advance when that would happen there'll be local closures as we're kind of moving all, along but traffic should still uh work relatively the same the way we've kind of posted uh or placed the, the water line that this is very schematic in nature just so you know and um, I forgot to mention this. This is actually the background for what we've kind of got proposed for um, the surface improvements and kind of what council has seen. And as we're moving forward with our design of that piece, so just to kind of give you a little idea of what uh, what this will kind of look like. So um, just a little a little taste. So as we're kind of as I'm kind of wrapping this up, um, I wanted to talk about parking. So we realized that closing the alley and not having uh, the access to some of you have rear um, parking behind your business that will not be available while the alley is closed. So we, the city is actually providing parking spots at the Hilltop Plaza parking garage down off of Daniel and Snyder Plaza. Uh, they actually just at the last council meeting, they um, approved uh, additional spaces for us to be able to use for this. Um, there were kind of a pilot program for some uh, initial spots and it's gone very well so we've increased that so we can provide this during construction so this is free for employees that are displaced by the alley closures your business or your company or whatever is eligible during um, the closure only of your alley so for example that first section of alley a from uh, westminster all the way up to milton um, you'll be eligible first then when we open your alley back up those those uh, spots in the garage will will go away so that they can be open for the next closure. Um, the one thing with this, that they must be reserved in advance. Uh, Amanda was 
on the call at the very beginning with us and, in, and doing the introductions, kind of getting us set up. She is the person at City Hall that is uh, responsible and kind of managing those permits basically. And um, I've left her email address here as well, uh, but you're welcome to contact me and I'll just forward you to her. Um, it's an it's a little piece of paper you have to fill out and then you'll get um, you'll get that permit back. So again, this is something that the city is providing free of charge for anyone displaced by uh, the construction as we're in your alley and your alley is closed. Um, for y'all to for your employees to park for uh, while that that piece is closed. Just to kind of wrap up a little bit. Um, to leave you kind of with this phasing piece so you can kind of again I know I've gone through a lot of information in a relatively short period of time but I wanted to be mindful of your time leave some time for questions at the end our construction starting uh, here in a couple of weeks and uh, the anticipated duration of that work is about 18 to 20 months we originally anticipated 20 to 24 months but SYB's uh, contract has kind of narrowed that down a little bit um, as we were hoping and we're very pleased about that so um, Kind of in closing a couple of things just to keep in mind that i talk about with all of our construction projects um, our permitted working hours are 7 a.m to 6 p.m monday through friday and 8 a.m to 5 p.m on saturdays saturday work does require prior approval uh, and it's usually 48 hours and any any work outside of any of those times uh, will be you will be notified in advance um, if they've got a water turn on like if they're going to be having to do a tie-in um, really early or really late you'll be you will be notified in advance of anything like that and we make every effort to complete this important project um, as quickly and as courteous, courteously as possible and we do appreciate your courtesy uh, in return and your patience and understanding is really appreciated this is construction it's messy it's noisy it's loud it's dirty um but it's important and your patience and willingness to just kind of flex a little bit with your outside of the norm regular is greatly appreciated and um we look forward to this being very smooth and not having any problems at all so um and with that our project contacts with syb contracting your project superintendent is logan bennett and the project manager is rod lacy their contact information is there uh, at the city, I'm Katie Barron, I'm the city engineer, and you met Jacob Spear earlier, the director of public works. I have three construction inspectors that work here at the city with me. Mark Ruscia will be the chief inspector on this project, and Gary Bouchelon and Kevin Oates will also be around as well. If you can't get a hold of Mark, you can get a hold of one of the other ones, or vice versa. So um, we appreciate your time with this today, and I am happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you, Katie. And we have um, gotten a couple of questions through the chat. Um, so let me work through these real quickly. Sure. Um, the first couple of questions are kind of specific to Bubba's. Um, if you want to, it might be helpful if you can pull up that section of the map sure. where they're at along Hillcrest. Um, they're asking about um, the drive through, if there will always be access to the drive through. Um, and then also the parking in front of the, the business. What will be the impact to the drive-through and the parking there? So the drive-through, uh, if they are, there might be some limited times when it we've got to get somebody in and out um, at one time or another, but it shouldn't like close the drive-through. That's not our intent. It will, it should be open the same hours that it normally would be. Um, there just might be, we might need to work some traffic around or be able to like kind of shove one way or the other, depending on what, when the contractor's bringing in work, but, uh, material and equipment and that kind of stuff. So, we'll, but we'll be able to work with you about that. The intent is not to have the drive through closed at all and for the traffic pattern to stay the same. Um, with that, that, uh, the only closures on the, let me move my my video out of my way so I can see my screen. Um, the the uh, access to the parking in the front will not be impacted except when that water line is being installed and just for a little bit at a time. Um, that will be closed. They won't be able, you won't have access to that, but it will not be for extended periods of time. I'm no more than two days, I can't imagine. Um, we're hoping that that is just a very specific time period to be able to get that water line in and get going. And I hope that answered your question. I'm happy to follow up with that if you need to. 
Um, they're also asking, I'm assuming it's kind of the same scenario for deliveries. Will for Bubba specifically, will they uh, actually, I'm assuming all of the businesses will have the same kind of hurdle when they have deliveries. Will there be an opportunity for them to be able to get deliveries? Yes, but not from the rear because the alley will be closed. There will be a hard closure there. I would, it, it'll be an open trench. It will not be a good place for you to want to go. So, um, the, I would encourage, uh, communication now with some of those. I realize um, that is not convenient for most of the restaurants who do take deliveries in the back, uh, but we will be able to work with you from a um, way to kind of get that going. But please be aware that there's only so much we can do if you can't get down the alley because of the work that's happening there. So, And I apologize that this question actually was um, specific to Bubba's and they get their deliveries on Rosedale. So oh, then that um, should be no problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me find the next question here. Bear with me. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but just to make certain, um, the garage at Hilltop, I'm assuming we'll always have access to the garage from Daniel. Will that be impacted at all with the work along Daniel? It might be a little bit, and we may have to kind of phase that. Um, we'll have to work with Hilltop about that uh, when, when it kind of comes down to it and uh, the contractor figure out how they want, you know, if they have a plate that they could pull over or how we're going to work through that. Um, if that may be one of the times that we do it on a specific day um, and we have access a different way. Um, I'm not anticipating that entire, the, I, I am anticipating there being access there at all times. Okay, great. Um... And this might be a question for SYB to chime in. I'm getting a question about information about SYB, the size of the firm, experience, previous projects, information like that. So I don't know if they'd like to take that question. Well, I'll give them a plug before they talk. Sure. Um, they're actually working for us right now and have worked in the city um, multiple times over the last 20 years. They did the uh, Lover's Lane replacement when we did that closure um, several years ago. Uh, Randy, on, on the phone today, Randy Bennett, Logan Bennett, and Rod Lacey. Um, Randy's one of the owners, basically, and he's um, they do a great job for us. And they're working right now on our Phase 2 stormwater project, so we've been very pleased. But uh, I'll let SYB chime in on whatever they want to do. Randy, how long have you been doing this? Um, SYB has been in business for 36 years. I've been doing it for longer than that. <laughs> um annually yeah we probably 60 million a year uh total revenue work in multiple you know multiple cities I mean, municipalities residential construction commercial construction um like i said we've done multiple jobs in university park lovers lane turtle creek uh work all over hillcrest preston road uh if they've been in you know, if they've been in University Park very long, they've they've seen us out there before. Yes, sir. And I will um I I got an email today from a resident that's very happy with the work that they're doing uh up at Southwestern and Hillcrest too. So um we're very pleased that they were selected for this project as well. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, just working through the next couple of questions that we have. Um, this is more of a request. Could we have an expected month, month by month, the phasing by month, I guess. So how we have, we think that the duration is two to three months. Is there a way to add calendar months to that phasing at this time? Uh, that's actually on the schedule um, back here. Uh, now, please keep in mind that this is our projected time frame for things. This is not set in stone and not something that I even necessarily can hold them to, depending. It's very weather dependent. It's very, um, <clears throat> it's dependent on a whole lot of factors that are outside of our control. We never know what we're going to dig up until we dig it up, right? So um, there are some things, that's why we, we tend to kind of give ranges. So for example, um, I am going to try to use my highlighter my my laser pointer here so just one second so phase one is basically this kind of phase because i actually did this the other day so 
Um, this is May, June, and July at the top. So um, you can see that the, the year here and the month letter, at least anyway. Um, and so then we get into phase two is kind of this piece of it is really kind of how I was looking at it. And then phase three and phase four, and then this is five, six, and then kind of seven as we go forward, as we go kind of down the way. So there are months attached to those. Um, I'm happy if, if someone wants to email me specifically with what they're specifically looking for. Um, but again, this, they update the schedule monthly, depending on the work that we've been able to accomplish, um, how much we've been able to, uh, how much they can kind of project out and, and those kinds of things. So it's not generally something that um, I can I can email to you regularly because it's constantly and in, in, it's very fluid, right, if you right. will. For, to use a pun, but. Um, well, I, and we may be able to help um, with some things on the website to help, um, you know, we can talk offline about how we can oh, help support that. That was the other thing. I was gonna tell everybody on this presentation and I should have made a note. Actually, I did make a note and I didn't read my notes. Um, that if you would like to get be on the city's um, email address, with, Amanda has a list specifically for Snyder Plaza. I know a lot of you got um, this information about this upcoming meeting from an email from Amanda. If you did not get that and you would like to, please email either of us um, and she can put you on that list. We'll have most of our um, communication to you from a like regular construction, your alley's gonna be closed, all that, will be on a door hanger or delivered directly to you. Um, but updates for construction and kind of when we're moving into different phases, that'll be on the website and we can definitely have um, some email communication about that as well. And Amanda, I'll work with Amanda about that, the yeah. communications department. Amanda kind of liaisons between a bunch of different things. So she's the keeper of lists. Well, and that's funny. We actually got a, a, a question about how we would communicate. So that was perfect timing to plug that because we do want as much you know, email address is the best way to get timely information to you all. So if you could share your contact with us, that would be very helpful. Um, Okay, let me work through the next couple of questions. Um, will there be signage to direct customers around the construction? Oh, yes. Um, for the most part, the construction is not going to happen in the plaza specific. So you might, there might be customers that are coming, if you're on Snyder Plaza itself, that might not even know that anything's happening in the alley unless they happen to drive down that street. On Hillcrest, there will be, I mean, it'll be pretty obvious that they're, you, they can't park right there but it's all the rest of the parking is available and or they can kind of park around the corner, but the entrance will still be open. They just won't be able to pull right in front of Starbucks, for example. Um, they'd have to park a little bit down one way or the other, but um, if, if we need to add additional signage, we certainly can. There will be construction signage like related to sidewalk closed or um, road work ahead, those kinds of things. Um, but if you have a specific need that um, you need to, get that, please do contact me and, and uh, we'll work through that with you. Because I know this is so specific to so many different, There, this is not my, re, my our regular residential construction right. <laughs> with residents in it, they're all kind of the same. This everybody, Everybody's business is a little bit different. So um, just bear with us as we're trying to work through some of that and realize that your neighbors are also kind of dealing with it as well. That's all we ask. Okay, our next question, I can answer this. Um, is There's a request to use the SMU garage there at the corner of Hillcrest and Daniel during the summer months. And yes, I think, I don't wanna overpromise, but I think we'll be able to make that happen. SMU's been a really great partner with us. Generally during school breaks, they're happy to allow use of the garage. So um, I will reach out to SMU and see if, Generally, I would say the last few years they've um, accommodated us during the summer months and then also during winter break. So I'm assuming they will allow us to to use the garage again, but I can um, make that request. And then um, usually what I do is when the garage becomes available, I send an email out to um, those on my list. So you need to get on my list um, and letting you know that the garage is available. So we'll take care of that. Um, the next question. What streets around the Rankin Hersey worksite do you expect the most truck and heavy machinery traffic? Okay. So we're still kind of working through that right now um, and kind of how I think it's gonna be kind of a little bit fluid depending on how we can get trucks to here. They will not be crossing the plaza. Um, so 
uh, Hersey and um, Hersey will be getting a lot of that uh, piece of it. Um, I'm hoping more from the south because that north section is so narrow, uh, but kind of coming in from Dickens, that's, that's going to be kind of a work in progress. Um, we also are going to be meeting out at the site. Uh, there will, there's two gates that will be allowed, probably one on Hersey and one closer to, um, so like right here, basically, and we've anticipated this, but it may be that that doesn't work well for trucks turning in, so we need to like put it over here or something like that. Um, but hoping that the, the gate here basically provides a little bit easier access kind of out and around um, for the work that they're going to do. Um, that we don't have that set in stone yet and it's going to be depend a lot on um, how they can get material in. Um, but that's one of the reasons we wanted this lot that this is really helpful because they can bring in uh, material and store it here rather than having to just kind of bring things a little bit at a time. Um, we actually have a place for them to lay down, which is very rare. Most of our construction projects, it's, I mean, you've probably seen them in other parts of town, uh, other parts of the city where there it's on Douglas and one whole section of the road has got, you know, pipe and sand and they got a backhoe park there or whatever. So, um, that's kind of to be continued, <laughs> but that's our plan right now is for, uh, for them to kind of come in on Hersey and then be able to access the plaza that way without crossing the plaza this way all the time. Okay, thank you, Katie. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on questions and make sure I've gotten everybody. Um, I think that's all the questions that I've received through the chat. Um, I don't see that anyone has raised their hands right now. Let me double check, no, but um, just a reminder that that opportunity is available as well. So if you still have a question that you haven't been able to send through the chat, if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you and you can um, talk with Katie and the contractor. Um, but I think we're caught up on our chat questions right now. Okay. Okay, perfect. I got another chat saying that um, someone's going to send me a, a list of the contacts for their business to make sure that they're all added to our email list. So very good. good. I appreciate that. Like. Yeah, the more information we can disseminate that way, the better. Uh, so we can kind of and update our contact information here at the city. So Okay, let's see. Oh, we just got one more question here. Hang on a second. Um, do you anticipate trucks parking on Dickens, Milton, Rankin? Uh, trucks like construction trucks. Um, the contractor will not be allowed to put that. Like no workers can park in and around the neighborhood. We don't allow that. That's city or that's citywide. Um, that they have to park elsewhere and kind of bus in. Um, exceptions are work trucks that they need to be. You know, if there's a labeled truck that they need to be able to get tools and stuff out of. Um, or they're most of the time they have lights on them, um, but they're labeled. Those are the, those will be there um, at various times. But um, so if you can, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, um, let me, um, Sarah. I'm going to unmute you if that's okay, because I, I want to make sure that we're answering your question right. appropriately. So I just unmute you, you if you want to address that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. No, I just wanted to see if there'd be um, limited parking on the actual residential street there, Milton and Rankin. No, no, ma'am. It will stay the same. Um, okay. As okay. Now, they won't be, um, especially from the alleys back all the way to Dickens. Um, uh -huh. That'll stay. That'll stay the same. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you for the question. Okay. Okay. We're caught up again on chat questions and um, oh. I see, as soon as I say that, one comes in. Um, so this question is about phase seven. Um, it says phase seven looks the most disruptive to the Snyder one-way traffic. Will we have info on the detour routes? Can you pull that one up, um, Katie? Say again? Can you pull up phase seven specifically? Oh, you've um, got it right there, actually. Well, yeah, uh, can you, this screen here, uh, all the phase seven is right here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Rosedale itself is the only one way street, I think, right? Um, that 
that operation will still the way that the water line is uh, is placed in the street um, is such that we should be able to allow traffic to go through there might be times when you we've got flaggers and we've got to kind of rotate the traffic through um, but I don't anticipate that being a problem based on kind of the placement in the street. There's, that's hard to do on this kind of scale of, of uh, schematic just to kind of show you that where it is going to be. Um, on the west side, where on the west side of the plaza, that section between Snyder and Allier is actually a little bit wider. We shouldn't have any problems uh, there. That one section with Rose. Uh, right by Bubba's and kind of that one-way piece right there that's going back towards Hillcrest um, will need to be uh working through how we're going to get those pieces done but our anticipation is that that will not require detours um because of how they need we there might not be parking available which is preferable to having a detour and not being able to get to your spot in my professional opinion um if you disagree with me feel free to email me but um being able to kind of get the keep the traffic pattern the same while we're still getting the work done there may be like small delays and stuff like that but um, i realized that is one of the heaviest used streets in town uh, so this was not going to be an easy piece but uh, we uh, will be working as quickly as we can to get that done thank you katie um, hopefully that answered your question um, if not raise your hand and i can unmute you if we need to talk about that a little bit more um, Okay, let's see. Well, we are all caught up on the chat questions. We might just give it 30 more seconds to see if anyone has any last minute questions. And also keep in mind, um, Katie's contact information was in the presentation. My contact information is in the presentation. Um, feel free to email us afterwards if you have additional questions that pop up after we get off today um, and again we'll make this presentation available on the website as well yeah so you can tell your neighbors who missed it and asked about it or want to know kind of what happened that they can come watch it <laughs> and uh get yeah, that's another bonus of doing it in this manner so we can be able to record that and then go back and uh share it with everyone later so Absolutely. Okay, well, with no additional questions, um, that concludes our presentation. I appreciate all of you for joining us tonight. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, thank you, Katie, for the wonderful presentation. And um, with that, we'll conclude. So thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone.